insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 82. Teens and Trust. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my responsible and trustworthy co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. Have a good week this week? This was your first full week of school, right? Uh, yep, definitely. How well did that go for you? Um, it went pretty well. Um, definitely a new experience, but, um, I definitely was able, but I was able to get all the work done and it wasn't super difficult, so. Good. So this was, uh, full week one, full days of remote schooling. What was the biggest challenge you ran into? Um, technical issues. Um, yeah, I think just, a lot of people ran into that. Yeah, there was actually, I think on Tuesday, a lot of people weren't able to go on Google Drive, and that's one of the main drives that we use, one of the main things we use for school, so, um. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have that issue, but oh, I knew other good. people did. Interesting, and I'm, I'm sure over the course of the next couple of weeks, they'll iron out all the little kinks and stuff here and there. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about teens and trust. And this is really more, uh, this topic is centered more on the relationship, the trust relationship that parents have with their teens and how important that is. But we'll touch on how trust becomes important in other things as well. Before we start on that, though, I would invite everyone to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and now officially I got the notifications that we are up on Amazon Music, so all your Echo devices can listen to the podcast now. Uh, we would also invite folks to uh, reach out to us with your feedback. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, any topics you'd like us to discuss. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can check out high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream six days a week on Twitch. Side note, if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you actually get a free Twitch monthly subscription. Uh, and we would encourage you to subscribe to the podcast with that. That helps us out tremendously. You can also get audio versions of the podcast at podcast.insightsinteens.com. Uh, Sorry, I really need to update these notes. Uh, you can also catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And you can get links to all of these and eventually our Instagram because we have that now, but I haven't gotten that into the notes. You can catch all of that on our website at insightsintothings.com. Are we ready to get into it? Yep. All right. So, what is trust? So, trust, and we've talked about respect in the past, right? Yep. So, trust is very much like respect. It's something that is difficult to earn, and it takes time to earn, but it can be squandered very easily, just like currency, just like money. Yep. Trust is the basic foundation of every relationship you'll ever make in life. So even beyond, you know, parent and child. So whether it's friends, family, or business associates, relationships are all built on trust. Your reputation is built on trust as well. Mm -hmm. Trust is defined simply as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, or ability or strength of someone or something. If I trust you, I know I can count on you. Mm -hmm. 
That's really what it comes down to. Yep. Um, this could mean counting on someone to have your back through a difficult period in your life or supporting you to help you get through it. It could mean counting on someone to tell your feelings to and your problems and secrets and knowing that they'll protect those with confidence. Uh, trust could mean knowing the person that you are with is going to look out for your best interest and not bring harm to you. That's where we kind of get into that relationship trust a lot. Like I trust mommy to look out for my best interest and not to deliberately bring me harm. And, I, and she trusts me in that same way. Yep. It could mean, it could be as simple as knowing that they'll treat you with the same consideration, respect, and thoughtfulness that you would treat them. And that's along the lines of a, a friendship trust there. There is a significant element of vulnerability that comes with trust. This is where people have trust issues. Trust falls. You know, you, hmm. you might oh. not trust someone to catch you in a trust fall. And, and there's where that vulnerability comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, so anytime that you do invest someone in trust, you expose yourself to a certain amount of vulnerability there. By its very nature, trust is trust in someone makes you vulnerable to them. That vulnerability is what builds trust because it's a mutual exposure that both parties share. And trust isn't always fair or an even tree, which means the risk of exposure is even more frightening. There are times that you may be in a position where you have to trust someone, but they don't necessarily have to trust you. And that's where it sort of gets complicated. So that's sort of where we are with trust. That's the definition that we're going to be working off of today. Okay. So let me, the first question that I want to ask with is, do you have trust issues? Um, not necessarily. Um, I do try to look out for signs of negative people and with those negative signs, I tend to not trust people who have already shown that people who do trust, have already shown how they, um, treat people who do trust them. And if they treat them negatively, it's a warning sign to me to know, don't trust them. But right. with someone who is, who does treat people kindly, who trust them and that they can, um, be very trustworthy and also trust the other person, then I can rely my trust on them as well. And that's a, that's a very good point because a lot of times it's that trust reputation that you rely on where if other people trust you, there's a higher chance that I'll be able to trust you because you have a proven track record. Mm -hmm. One great example of trust, and I don't know if you're familiar with Charlie Brown and the Peanuts cartoons. Kind of. So there's this one recurring theme in there where and I forget if it's Lucy or Peppermint Patty. One of them holds a football for Charlie Brown to kick. Yeah, that's Lucy. That's Lucy. So she holds the, the football for him to kick over and over. And as he's about to kick it, she pulls it away and he falls. That's someone that you can't trust. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well. you can. You can trust that they're going to continue to do the same thing. So that's that's sort of another thing is that. Trustworthy people are people you can count on. Untrustworthy people are people you can't count on. But you can trust that they're going to be untrustworthy. So, for instance, if I loan you $20 and you don't pay it back, and I loan you $20 again and you don't pay it back, then chances are the next time I loan you $20, you're not going to pay it back. That doesn't mean you don't need it, but what it means is I can't trust that you'll pay me back. But if I don't need that 20 bucks, then I can give it to you at that point. Then, then I, at least I know I can, I can reconcile myself to know that I'm not loaning you $20. I'm giving you $20. So in a lack of trust, you can build an assumption of trust. Like if I can assume I can't trust you to pay him back, then I know I'm not going to get it. So I'm not going to be disappointed by giving you 
So there's kind of that extension of trust there, too. So, well, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about why building trust in your teenager is important. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So we're talking trust today. We're talking teens and trust. And I'm going to talk about why it's important to build trust with your teenagers. One of the things that they talk about is your your child needs your trust to help them in their transition through adulthood. Because you you come to your parents for advice a lot, don't you? Uh-huh. And you know, if you didn't trust your parents, you wouldn't have that resource. You know, our parents are a resource for you as you're growing up, aren't they? Yeah, pretty much. Now, do you do you trust mommy and daddy to guide you through that? I mean, yeah. I'm very trustworthy because you guys definitely give me the good advice and you don't just shoo me away or tell me bad advice that um I realize will give me consequences later on. So, I definitely can trust you guys um to give me the right advice and help me and help guide me through any problems I'm going through. That's good. Now, they do say that trust is a mutual relationship. So, you, the parent and the child need to meet in the middle and develop a healthy way to trust each other and to reach decisions together. So, you know, if you trusted us, but you proved untrustworthy, that would kind of be a one-sided relationship there that wouldn't work out very well. Yeah. Do you think you are trustworthy yourself? I mean, I try to be trustworthy. Um, like, um, mommy used to have to tell me to take my bath, um, every time I needed to take a shower. Um, and a few months ago, I just started doing it on my own. And after that, she stopped telling me to take my bath when I needed to because she could trust me to do it and normally, and I would always normally do it. Right. That's a very good example there. They say, remember, the more this mutual trust is tested, the longer it will take to place, to, to put in place where you're both confident you can trust each other. So if we asked you to do things and you consistently didn't do things, then you, it takes longer to trust, right? So it's the action of trusting builds trust, but the failure to follow through on that trust erodes trust quickly. So every time we ask you to do something and you do it, that builds trust quickly. But when you fail to do it, we then have to make up for that failure and then rebuild that trust again. And, then, and you know, we're not talking about major things here. Sometimes it's forgetfulness. Sometimes it's you're so busy doing other things that you don't get around to doing things. So we're not talking major violations of trust, um, although they can happen. You know, you can make bad decisions. A great example is if mommy and daddy go away for a weekend and you decide that that's a great time to throw a party. So that would be a major violation of trust. 
But if I ask you to take the trash out and you're busy doing homework and then you move on from that to watching TV, that's not going to erode trust all that much on our part. And the same thing, you know, if mommy and daddy promise something to you, you know, if we promise to take you out to buy you new school clothes and daddy decides he wants to go buy a big screen TV instead and I can't afford to buy you clothes, that's, you know, a compromise of that trust. So it really is a two-way street. And as long as we're all honest with each other and, and we work towards building that trust, that's something that is a foundation moving forward. Now, do you, do you feel that you can trust mommy and daddy to look out for your best interests at this point? I mean, yeah, you've definitely proven it multiple times. Like, whenever I'm down and um, I needed someone to talk to or I just needed some advice, you guys were always there to help me and you were looking for the best solution to help me and and not really concerning about um, it violating any of your needs, although most of the time it never really did. Um, so yeah, I definitely say that I trust you guys to look out for me. Well, that's important. You know, a relationship without trust leads to second guessing and questioning each other's honesty. Uh, when your child was young, they probably trusted you unequivocally, but and as the person, they would trust you as the person that would keep them safe. And and really, that's how it should be. It should just be by default. But as children grow up, they become more independent, and they start to notice and question more. So as you get older, that trust is less implicit and needs to be more explicit. We don't just earn trust automatically. To a certain extent you do, because we're your parents and we're legally responsible for you. But, you know, we have to continue to set a good example, to show that we deserve that trust, just like you do. You know, it's, it's a, you don't reach a point and then you stop making that effort, you know? Yeah. Uh, we have to continuously do that. It's around this time that your child may notice whether uh, you do what you say you'll do, which is a key factor in building trust. So, again, if I promise to do something and I don't, that erodes that trust. If I ask you to do something and you commit to doing it, but you don't do it, that's another way to erode trust. As a parent, I can't demand trust, especially as you get older. Yep. I have to earn it because I can't expect you to just give trust to anyone because they demand it. Because when you get out in the real world, that type of philosophy is very dangerous because it's gonna you're gonna get burned if 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 I teach you that I demand trust and I should get it and you just give it to me and I don't deserve it, then you're gonna employ that in the real world, in a job, in a relationship, in a friendship, whatever. And that could lead to problems at that point in time. You have to know how to trust people. Yeah. And what signs to look for. It is gradual, and it requires mutual commitment. So both sides have to work at it, just like a relationship. You know, relationships take two people to make work, and they take two people to fail. And if you're not willing to put in the effort, you're never going to have that trust that you need for a successful interaction with people. Um, it will also set your child up to develop healthy relationships in the future. Uh, it's worth noting that teenagers are going through an intensely private time in their lives when you go through this period in your time. Personal space becomes very important. The desire for privacy doesn't always mean untrustworthy activity is taking place. It's important to keep that in mind. Let's talk briefly about privacy and how important that is. A lot of times we've run into, and I'm just going to talk in broad terms about privacy here with the internet. 
So one of the things that's a big push nowadays is the government doesn't want people to use encryption. The government thinks that they should be able to access everybody's email and voicemail and and text messages and all that stuff because having it encrypted impedes their ability to investigate crimes. Okay. So they want to have backdoors into things. Well, that backdoor is a trust violation because the government then has access to all your personal stuff. So the problem that you run into is if you give that that access up to people, then there's no way for you to protect it. You have to trust them to protect it. Yeah. And the, the line that the government tends to use is, well, if you have nothing to hide, then why are you hiding things? And it's really, it doesn't come down. Privacy is not about hiding things. Privacy is about privacy. I don't want you to know what I'm doing in private because it's none of your business. Yeah. Like, some of the stuff can be super personal. Right. And, um, like, and privacy can, like, hide the personal stuff because there's a bunch of stuff that you don't tell, that you don't put out in the world. And you just keep to yourself or your family. Like, privacy is basically just the personal stuff that you want, and people who try to violate that privacy, well, it's not any of their business. It's not any of their business to look at your personal information or any of, or anything you find personal. And, um, I think privacy is important for your, for more of your personal, um, ideas. And when someone tries to go, and when someone tries to break that privacy, it causes distrust. Exactly. And that's the, the really, the gist of what privacy is. It's, it's private, not because I'm doing something wrong and don't want people to see it. It's private because it's private and I have a right to my privacy. So. As you start to get older, and and to a certain extent it's happening now because you spend a lot of time in your room, you do a lot of your projects in your room at this point in time, and whether that's for privacy reasons or because it's convenient or what, doesn't really matter. You know, that's your private space, and, you know, if we're going to come into that private space, we need to ask permission. And that's a trust thing. You know, we trust that you're not doing something you know, bad in private, but that you rely on that privacy for your creative edge, for your, you know, self-meditation time, that, that personal time that each of us needs, you're entitled to that. And if we didn't trust you, we wouldn't allow that. So trust kind of reaches out into that aspect of things too, where it's not just a personal one-on-one. It, it's about, you know, what you do, how you do it. You, you might not want people to see uh, the projects that you're working on because you're not ready for people to see them. We need to trust that the things that you're doing are above board, basically. So that's that's sort of what the relationships that we look at when we talk about parents and teenagers, where it's a two-way street and we have to make sure that we're all on the same page and we we earn each other's trust. And I think that's the most important part. There are some benefits that come with a trusting relationship. Um, Building a trusting relationship with your teenager, you'll see benefits like your teenager feels open and comfortable to talk to you about difficult things. If we didn't respect your privacy and we didn't have a trusting relationship, you'd be very hesitant to come talk to us. And I think the one thing that mommy and I like to maintain is a very open line of communication. If something is bothering you, we should be able to talk about it. If there are concerns that you have, you need to be able to come to us to it. We might not be able to solve all the problems, but that openness when you have a problem to talk to us is something that can be very therapeutic. 
So what is that level of comfort right now if something is bothering you? Do you feel okay coming to mommy and daddy to talk to us about it? Yeah, you are prob- You guys are probably the first people I go to talk about it because I trust you guys so much because you guys have proven that you, although you may not solve the problem, talking about it with you guys still um, retains some helpfulness and um, can also help resolve the problem. So, yeah, I definitely feel comfortable coming to you guys if I have a problem. Good. Yeah, it's not always about solving the problem. Sometimes it's about nudging you in the right direction or asking questions about the problem that you might not ask yourself that help you find that solution. So there's different approaches to it. One of the other benefits is that your teenager demonstrates positive, trustworthy behaviors in other aspects of their life. So if we set that good example here, then that example follows through to other parts of your life, um, setting you up in a positive relationship in adulthood. So it's got long-lasting implications once you understand what that trusting relationship is all about. Uh, Building a relationship with uh, your teenager that goes beyond the parent-child disciplinary relationship and strengthening the bond for years to come as well as another benefit. So it's not just about us telling you what to do and making sure you do it. Again, it's a two-way street, and it helps us to go from that parent-child relationship to that parent-adult relationship later on. And, And this teenage time period where that transition takes place can be kind of awkward if you don't have that trust. I've, I'd like to think I've transitioned to that parent adult phase with Sam at this point in time where he and I, you know, we don't, we don't talk to each other like parent child. We talk to each other like we're mutual adults. And I think to a certain extent, you and I are there as well because you know we don't it's it's not a always a mentor type thing in our discussions you know i ask your opinion i listen to your input and i treat you like you know a young adult at this point in time because that's exactly how you act and that type of more advanced relationship is a product of the trust that we have with each other uh, and if we didn't have that trust, we couldn't have that kind of relationship. We'd, it would still be a disciplinary type relationship the whole time. Yeah. Any questions on the, the, the teen and parent trust dynamic that we just talked about? No, I think we pretty much got it. Um, we hit it right on the nail. Hit it right on the nail. Okay. I don't know what the saying is. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what the saying is. You hit the nail right on the head. Ah. That would be the saying. Ah, that's what I meant to say then. That's what I meant to say. Oh, I, I understand what you meant. Let's take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about uh, trust relationships in general. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. We are talking teens and trust today. One of the things that parents need to do in order to meet the needs of their teens is they need access to 
information about their teens to provide them and guide them, provide for them and guide them on their journey through adulthood. Now, some parents opt for an evasive and exposed approach by snooping on their teens, looking at your diaries, checking your online activities, and, you know, a lack of a better, for lack of a better term, it's more spying. These are tactics that are required when there's a lack of trust between teens and parents. So you and I didn't trust each other. I'd have to snoop on you to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong. Whereas if we have that trust relationship, I'm less concerned about you doing something wrong. But even outside of that, the methods by which I keep tabs on you as a parent, because really parents do act in a supervisory form to make sure that we're guiding you correctly. It's much more passive. You know, I'm not logging into your social media accounts. I'm not looking at your email. I'm not grabbing your phone and checking your text messages randomly. It's a trust thing. And as long as that trust exists, we can maintain that level of privacy that you deserve. If that trust is violated, then, then you probably don't deserve that level of privacy if you can't be trusted, I think is kind of what we're getting at here. Okay. So the option to snooping on you is to build a relationship of trust with you. And uh, the information that we need at that point, we can exchange freely. You know, I can ask you if you were on the phone with someone or FaceTiming with someone. I can ask you, Maddie, who were you talking to? And I can trust you to tell me the truth. When, we, when we're not hiding things, it's a lot easier to maintain that level of trust. There's a couple of other things that uh, is suggested. So these suggestions come from a website called All Pro Dad, which I thought was kind of interesting. So they say model the expected behavior. Parents should conduct themselves in the way that they would expect their teens to conduct themselves. Set the example through your actions as a parent. Be open and honest. Avoid activities you don't want your teen engaging in. Communicate frequently and have an open mind. And I think this is a parenting philosophy that mommy and daddy have tried to adhere to since day one, and that is to set a good example. Let me ask you, have we been successful in setting a good example for you? I mean, yeah. So let's look at the list here. So conduct yourself in the way that you should expect your teen to conduct themselves. I mean, yeah, think about the problem solving. You identify the problem and you take those steps to um, make sure that the problem is solved and you've instilled that on me so that whenever I come in to, so that whenever I have a problem, I know to identify the problem, not um, hold in the emotions if I am frustrated, and then take the steps needed to, to, uh, be, to fix the problem. So, you definitely have that one. Um, set an example through actions. Definitely, you guys, um, definitely, you guys are definitely, um, very inspiring when you, um, have your actions because other than, you know, you, you know, screaming at technology. You, <laughs> most of the time, you um have you definitely show um good behavior through your actions. Like you guys are polite to people, and that I should be polite to people as well. So right. that kind of thing. Um, be open and honest. I definitely think um whenever I need to know something, you guys are honest with me, and I can trust you guys to tell me the truth. Um, avoid activities that your teen, that you don't want me to engage through. Yeah, like, you guys don't really want me to, let's say, have alcohol. For the most part, you guys don't, you guys don't drink. You don't drink. Mommy, on occasions, does drink, but most of the time she doesn't. Right. And she definitely doesn't get drunk, so. Right, um, she does not drink to excess. Yes. 
So, um, yeah, I definitely say that you guys are good with that. Communicate frequently and have an open mind. We communicate a lot. We do, um, we do it at dinner. We do the podcast and we just do it when we want to have fun. Um, so yeah, I definitely think we have all those down. Okay. So the next thing that they talk about is find common interests. Find topics that you both have an interest or passion for, even if they're opposing viewpoints. Discuss these topics and understand each other's perspective. Learn to see things from the other person's point of view and understand their reasoning. Learn to understand the perspective of an opposing party. Now, this is something that I I didn't used to do in my youth. Uh, I was very pig-headed. I was very obstinate. I would develop my own point of view, my own opinions, and then I would vigorously argue those without ever stopping to try to look at the perspective of other people. And in my advanced years, I suppose, knowledge and experience has dictated that I be more open-minded, that I put myself in other people's shoes. And again, even if you don't have... Even if you have opposing points of view, the ability to sit down and discuss these in a calm, rational manner allows you to see things from somebody else's point of view, even though you might not agree with it. But it helps you to understand how they reach their reasoning. Um, Is this something that mommy and daddy are successful at with you? I mean, yeah. Honestly, right now, I'm just thinking about when we have to decide where to go for dinner or what to do for dinner. Um, We all have different ideas of what we want to eat, um, and we all listen to each other's um, suggestions, and then we come up with a plan. Like, sometimes when you guys are eating, when Mommy cooks something that I'm not entirely interested in, we have, um, like, frozen pizzas in our... um, freezer that we that she would just microwave for a few minutes and give me instead of me eating uh whatever fr- the food that she was making that I didn't really favor so we definitely can make compromises so well, that's good good i'm glad we're we're teaching you some of the these techniques the next thing they talk about is think and plan for the future there are multiple stages of development teens go through Having a plan for each stage and preparing your team for the changes they can expect is important. Encourage your team to form their own opinions on topics, do their own research, and not just adopt what they hear at home or from their friends. Invest the time to help your team plan for their future so they understand that you're invested in their success and development. This is one of those things that I always try to instill in you and and even Sam to a certain extent, and that is I have my own opinions, and I form my opinions generally through multiple sources. I don't just read one news source and let that dictate the direction that I think. I prefer to look at multiple sources. And I prefer to look at opposing sources. And then you sort of, it's like a mathematical equation. So you add up all the facts that you have, and then you distill those down into what the real facts are. And then that's how I develop my opinion. And I try to encourage both you and Sam to do the same thing. Am I successful in this? And do you feel as though mommy and daddy are invested in your future success? Yeah, um, I definitely say that you always want, you would, um, want me to try something new, um, if I was doing the same thing over and over again. And for most of the time, I do have different, um, I have different hobbies than you guys. I have different opinions than you guys do. Um, Honestly, although I have a lot of in common with you guys, I also have a lot that's different, and I definitely think that you guys um, 
want me to be successful in the future and are open to hearing my different ideas and allow me to be different than you guys. Yeah, and I and I agree with that 110%. Um, there are things that are obviously inherited from both mommy and I. It's the things that are different about you that I think are probably the most wonderful. Like, it's nice knowing that you and I have a similar personality, but it's really cool knowing that you're the only left-handed person that's ever been in my family. Like, that makes you so unique and special that I think it's it's almost magical. You know, like, that's uniquely you, and you can hold on to that, and, and you can proudly say that this is you and, and you're your own person and that's exactly how we want you to be. Spend time with your team. Do fun things together that you both enjoy. Let them understand that how important their time is to you and how much you enjoy and share time together. Let them know how interested you are in their hobbies and use that time to understand their passions, interests, and points of view. Learn to understand what makes your team tick. And I think that's kind of the definition of what this podcast really has been. Yep. Enjoy the time you have with your team and ensure they enjoy the time with you. An enjoyable time together will ensure they want to spend more time with you and that it won't be a chore. Now, this is, I don't regret a lot of things in life. I sort of accept the decisions that I've made. And understand that I've made mistakes and I live with them. But this sort of touches on one of the regrets that I have. And that is I didn't follow this philosophy as truly as I would have liked to with Sam. Very early on up through his early teen years, this was the case. You know, we were inseparable. We enjoyed our time together. And then I failed to adapt when he started to mature and change and his needs started to change. And that failure led to a, a several years of a very rough relationship with him. And that inability for me to adapt to that is one of my biggest regrets in life uh, because it cost me a lot of time with him that I can't get back now. And I missed out on a lot of things in his life that I wish I hadn't. So one of the things that I'm at least trying to do is learn from that mistake and not repeat the same thing with you. Am I so far successful in that effort? I mean, yeah, I'd say so. Um, at one point... I remember one day, now I'm going to give an example that we play video games together. So one day I'd come home from school when I was in, I think, sixth grade, and I had a really bad day, and you decided, hey, why don't we play video games for an hour? And we played a video game, and I really enjoyed it. And later on, we started doing that more and more often, and I enjoyed the time with you. And once we had gotten, um, one of our new, one of the older new game systems, um, the Genesis, right? Yep. Um. The newer old game system, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, we, we were playing the two player games and I really liked a lot of the games and I wanted to, um, play them with you because I enjoyed, like, the, f just the funny times and it was just a fun time and even before the podcast started i asked hey after this do you want to go play video games right. and although you might not always have time um i do enjoy spending time with you and i enjoy doing the podcasts because then we really get to know each other how everything has been going it's sort of like we don't know, so we don't normally talk a lot during the week because you have work, I have school, and we have our own things that we do. And I definitely think the podcast um, allows us to have those um, interactions that we could have had during the week, um, and it's definitely a good way to um, engage with you a bit more than we normally do. So 
I definitely enjoy spending time with you. And the same thing goes with mommy. Like, um, when it was summer vacation and she had had a week off, um, we, ha we don't normally go out because she normally had work during the summer, but during that vacation time, we ended up going out every single day and, um, we enjoyed spending time with each other. Um, and I enjoyed doing, um, everything with her so that we could, so, yeah, I definitely say I enjoy time, I enjoy spending time with you guys, and another thing with mommy was that, you know, we watch our movies, or Big Brother, um, every, well, weeknights, right. so, yeah, I definitely say that I enjoy spending time with both of you. Nice. Well, that's good to hear. The last thing they talk about here is one that I kind of touched on already, and that is learn from your mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. We all do as long as we learn from them. It's less costly to learn from someone else's mistakes than your own. So if you can learn by observation, that's good. Don't be afraid to reveal mistakes you've made in the past. Those revelations go a long way to building trust and making your teen realize you aren't perfect and have gone through many of the same things they're going through. There's light at the end of the tunnel. You're proof of that as a parent. So that's a message out there to the parents that, you know, we all make mistakes. We don't, don't ever try to portray yourself as being perfect to your, your kids. Because you'll never be able to live up to that expectation. Be honest with your mistakes. Let your kids learn from your mistakes. And let those mistakes be a foundation for building trust. You know, what have I always told you about mistakes? You always said that it's okay to make them as long as you learn from them. Exactly. We learn more from our mistakes than we ever learn from our successes. So I'm, and believe me, I have many flaws and I make many mistakes in life. Some of them you might not want to own up to because they can be embarrassing or painful, but there's always a lesson to be learned from them. And as long as we're learning, we're moving forward in the right direction. Um, I do want to say something. Yes. So, this kind of reminds me of character designs. Um, like, everyone has flaws, um, likes and dislikes, and there's actually been a certain, um, stereotype that a lot of characters, like, a lot of people, a lot of, like, beginning characters turn out, like, you want your created character to be perfect, absolutely no flaws, everyone loves them, and there's nothing wrong with them. Well, the problem with them is that there is no problem with them. Like, they have no flaws, they're shown to be perfect, and honestly, the perfect or normal people are kind of boring. Like, they really don't have much of a personality with out any flaws. They might have good personality traits, but no personality traits that counter them. And I definitely think characters that have character traits like that counter um like ne like character traits don't have to be entirely negative or entirely positive. Characters can have a mix of both, and it can still make for an interesting and entertaining character that can be relatable to people. And honestly, if you make the perfect character, no one's going to relate to them because, I mean, people might want to live up to their expectations, but no one's going to be perfect. There's no such thing as someone being perfect. So the perfect character is not relatable, but an imperfect character, which is pretty much every other character, um, is a good and relatable character. So, Very good point. And a good transition point to come back and talk about mistakes and pitfalls to look out for. So this section actually is uh, inspired by a Huffington Post article uh, talking about things to avoid. You know, some of the more common mistakes that parents can make that compromise the trust you've built and make regaining the trust difficult. So one of the number one things is one we've talked about already, and that's avoid unrealistic expectations. Don't set the bar so high that it's unattainable. 
Uh, it's fine to have expectations for your team, but ensure they're realistic. Don't expect your team to be perfect. They won't be. No one is, like you just said. Be understanding and compassionate that they'll make mistakes. Discuss the expectations and respect the concerns your teens might have about the expectations you hold for them. Um, I, in fact, I think at this point in time, at least from a scholastic standpoint, I think your expectations significantly exceed ours for your scholastic requirements. Yeah. So I don't have any concerns there. But do you feel that we put unrealistic expectations on your performance or behavior or anything? No, definitely not. Like, I, um, myself, put unrealistic expectations on my, um, plate. So, and then when you guys see those unrealistic expectations, basically it's like a mountain. And, um, and you want, and you're at the very bottom and you want to get to the taller point. Um, and you already know it's going to be a rough journey. Um, and you guys would normally just plan small little goals to, um, in order to get me to at least a somewhat high spot on the mountain before I have to climb back down. And basically, those small little goals are like little celebrations, um, so that I don't overwork myself in order to feel as though I have to reach that goal or else I'm not going to, or else I won't feel like I've completed it. So yeah. I definitely say that you guys don't set unrealistic expectations for me, and you help me whenever I set unrealistic expectations for myself. Good. The next thing they talk about is be honest. Always be honest with your teen. Even if there's something you might not feel comfortable talking about, make them aware of the discomfort or the reasons for not wanting to talk about that subject. Don't avoid the subject. and. Above all else, don't lie about the subject. There are times that there are things that I can't discuss with you, either because they're proprietary or personal or not age-appropriate. And in those cases, I'll tell you that I can't, and I'll tell you why. But in all other cases, I try to deal with you as openly and honestly as I possibly can. Uh, and that is key to building trust. Going along with that is don't heap undeserving praise on a team. If you come to me with a piece of artwork that I don't honestly think looks good, I'm not going to tell you it looks good just to help, you know, not hurt your feelings. I won't tear you down, but I will offer suggestions to creatively improve things. Like you come to me about your movie. You know, I see the opening scene to your movie, and I like it, but there are ways to improve it, and I'll provide you qualitative feedback for that. Lying to you and, pra and praising it and saying it looks great and it's the best movie I ever had, that's a missed opportunity to help you improve yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're going for, is, is to help you grow. Yeah, constructive criticism. Exactly. Um, I want to run, we're running short on time here, so I do want to run through the last couple that I have here real quick. All righty. Uh, communicate early and often. Communication is the key to building any relationship. When you sense something might be wrong or bothering your team, ask about it. Don't be overly insistent, but, you know, we, mommy and daddy can kind of sense when something's bothering you. Yep. And we don't like it to just fester there. A lot of times we think talking about it helps. Although, you know, you poke a stick in my cage occasionally. That's what I do. Uh, don't smother them. And we're not talking about with a pillow. We care about our teens and want the best for them, but not at the expense of being overly burdensome on them. You need your space. I respect that. We're here if you need us. Sometimes we'll pry a little bit if we think something's going on or we feel like you need a little bit of guidance or assistance. But for the most part, it's up to you. If you have issues, questions, concerns, it's incumbent upon you to come to mommy and daddy. And that's why that trust relationship is so important. Because if you didn't trust us, you'd never come to us. And then we'd have to be that 
helicopter parent who's always hovering over you and, and watching over you. And, and that's probably not something that you want, right? Yeah, probably not. Teens need their privacy, what can I say? Right. So as long as that trust relationship exists, that communication, that, that line of communication will still be up there and we can count on each other to keep it going. So that was all that I wanted to talk about on the pitfalls. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing remarks and shout outs. Go for your closing remarks. All right. So to teens, parents, and anyone else out there who might be experiencing some small trust issues, or if you're just going to watch the podcast, understand that trust with any relationship is important. Even if we only cover the teen and parent relationships, there's a lot of other um, trusts that you... that other trust for other relationships that um, are just as important as this. Um, and if you are going through trust issues in any relationship, um, just know that there are ways to fix them, but it, mo- but it won't like happen like that. Very good point. Uh, that was all we had for today. Before we go, I do want to remind folks to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. Uh, I use Overcast myself, uh, and we're available on Amazon Music now. Please feel free to reach out and give us your feedback at comments at insightsintothings.com, on Twitter at insights underscore things. High-res videos are available on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Audio versions of the podcast are available at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or you can get links to all those on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you... And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Nicely done. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.